First and foremost, it's an honor and a privilege to be here today with like-minded people that are so uh, positive and just challenging the status quo. We've heard from a lot of speakers um, just about you know the medical aspect of this, but overall quality of life and that we're all putting the work in to challenge what we're told is the norm. And that's the mission of my story and sharing it is so that way people can you know take it, take what they can from it and implement new changes in their lives to create the life that they want. So thank you for all the efforts that you guys are putting in and for having me here, Dr. Westman and the team. It's, it's truly an honor. And with that being said, I want to start with asking, like, who's here, who here is grateful to be alive today? All right, awesome. Now, how many of you on a daily basis are actually conscious to gratitude, to wake up, to be alive, to do the things you can? All right. So that was something I was never conscious to until about eight years ago when I was 21, sitting in the emergency room, or actually urgent care office, by myself, waiting on a routine MRI scan, I say routine lately, uh, from a you know, brain injury. And I was told, Josh, you have a brain tumor. We don't know if it's cancerous or nine, but we do know if you want to live, you have to have it taken out. You'll probably never ride again, and you'll be lucky to walk. And that was the first thing the doctor said to me. And granted, he was an urgent care doctor, he wasn't my primary physician, but that left me with a lot of fear, a lot of worry, a lot of doubt. And I call it, you know, the power of suggestion. And I had a choice then, you know. It's funny how fear plays a role in our lives, depending on what we allow it to do. But I could have taken that route of, and I did for a minute, you know, why me? Am I a bad person? What did I do to deserve this? And at the time, you know, living my dream. Like, I had worked so hard to make this a reality. And it, it's, it's just funny how fear plays a role in your life and what you do with it. So. A little backstory that the video didn't show is I grew up on Cape Cod, born and raised in Massachusetts, and <laughs> at that time I developed a passion for BMX bike riding. And alongside that, I was also really interested in landscaping. And my family taught me to work hard and you know earn the life that you want. So I went to a technical high school to be trained to run the business and start my own one day. And actually, I was a family friend who owned the business, and he was teaching me to, just, to do that same thing at 15, 16, and 17. But then BMX started taking over. I started traveling for more contests. I was making money, so I was sending myself everywhere. And I got an ultimatum from him one day. Josh, you need to pick. You're taking all these Fridays and Mondays off. Granted, you're doing well, but you know, I need you here. Do you want to work or do you want to ride? And uh, it, it was easy, you know? I uh, <laughs> said, all right, see ya. And you know, I followed my heart, and I left a very conventional lifestyle that was being set up for me for you know, what I call the almighty American dream. You know, I had everything going. I'm young, I'm making really good money and I'm being set up to run my own business one day, but it didn't matter. I had a dream and a vision I'd been creating for my life, and I wanted to pursue that. I wanted to follow it and see where it would go. I'm 17, what do I have to lose? I can go back to school later on, I mean, I can go work. But uh, it was really that decision that I made, that ultimatum for my boss, that changed my life forever. I dropped out of high school, I moved 13 hours south to Greenville, North Carolina, to train with Dave Muir and the other professionals. And I had a lot of success. In the video mentioned, I wrote X Games not too long after that. I've been traveling the country, touring for contests, competing with my idols and becoming friends with them. You know, I've been to Saudi Arabia and Iraq to perform for the troops, been on America's Got Talent and other you know, televised events. And I was living my dream, literally living my dream, like three years, two, three years in after moving. But at that same time, I've been on my own. I've been on a budget. So a two-year Dr. Pepper a day was cheaper than you know, water to me. And uh, I was, you know, living a poor lifestyle. I've been, that time I was younger than I should have been, but getting into drinking. I was living in a college town with a bunch of professional athletes that, sadly enough, just partied a lot. It's changing now, especially in the BMX community, but, you know, I was very stressed inside and out. I was, you know, financially stressed and physically stressed and not sleeping well, late nights. I was just partying at night, wake up early, train all day. And it took, in March 2010, falling one day, hitting my head, to really audit my life. And what happened was, had I not fallen and hit my head, I would have been on that same path. I wouldn't be here today. So it's just a perspective shift that really helped me. And that tumor diagnosis was a manifestation of a year or two of suffering and being in pain and being denied a scan. I literally had asked multiple times, should we get a CAT scan, x-ray, MRI, something? Very ignorant, but I knew there was something going on that they weren't saying. No, you're young, you're 21, you, you know, you're in shape, 
paperwork's fine, you know, you go home, here's some pain pills and manage the, you know, the pain. And it really took that, that crash that saved my life. I wouldn't be here today without it. So, I got diagnosed. Three weeks later, Dr. Alan Friedman at Duke University rushed me in into his schedule because he said I continued following that path for about another like month or two, and I may have not woken up one day. So, the surgery was successful after about six hours, and I, I saw him again later on, and he remembered everything. He said, you were the difficult one, and the resident was pushing me because, you know, four hours it should have been. We took six. But I told him what you do on that bike and why you need all these motor functions. We've got to take our time. And it was just, it was amazing, like, brain surgeons are just three different kind of people, but it was pretty awesome. <laughs> so that was March 2010. Now, while recovering on the road to recovery, I actually was competing in about 13, 14 weeks after surgery, which was something I never fathomed happening. I thought I was done, you know. But all along that recovery, I saw a documentary called Food Matters. Now, it's been many years since I've seen it, so I had no idea if I agree with any of the information anymore. But it did spark this simple interest in me, like the way they presented the information about how your lifestyle choices, specifically the food we choose to consume, how it correlates to our health and quality of life. It really triggered something in me that made some changes. And I continued making changes, not some, you know, I was on a start, but 2012, I was in India doing demos with some of my friends for BMX, and I got this uh, email from my mom saying, hey, when you're home, we need to talk. And I, I'm smart enough to think, I just had an MRI before I left. She's not telling me what's wrong, she wants to talk, so something's up. I finally got it out of her, I had two days left of the trip, but she said, you know, the routine MRI showed two new tumors had popped up. So immediately I emailed Dr. Friedman, had asked him, hey, what, what's the severity of this? I'm in India right now, I have two days left, do I need to come home? He said, no, it's fine, you know, it's a complication of the original tumor wrapped around the, the artery in your brain and your optic nerve. And it's fine now, it's not too much of a risk, Just finish your trip, come home, we'll assess it. And he, uh, he mentioned a thing called radiation. And to me, it's very ignorant, but very scared. And my mom had gone through chemo and radiation over the years for colon cancer. She's still doing well today, the most positive, happy person you'd never expect that from. But I had a lot of you know, fears from that. You know, I had uh, you know, witnessed some of the things that she'd experienced, and I didn't want that. So I did some, went to Dr. Google and found Gamma Knife radio treatment. Instantly thought, Gamma Knife. He said not to have surgery, but this is knife. And so I asked him about it, what do you think? He's like, no, that's great. Did a lot of research. The, the results were phenomenal. It was outpatient procedure. The majority of people have, you know, see success and get back to their normal day-to-day -day things. And so I went through that, and for about four years, the two tumors that had come back were shrinking, and now they're stable. So for me and my situation, it's best case scenario. And it's, it's really amazing what modern technology can do. But then thereafter, I got, I got even more interested in this holistic health thing, and food, and your thoughts, and fitness, exercise, whatever you want to call it. And I found this program called the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, where you could become a certified holistic health coach. And like I said, that diagnosis left me with a lot of fear. And fear is a really good motivator, depending on your perspective with it. So I decided to go through the program. I emptied my savings to, at the time to, to enroll in it, and I uh, had some great feedback from people that had gone through it, so I, I was confident with it. Now along that journey, in that program specifically, I got introduced to a gentleman named Mark Sisson. Who's familiar with Mark Sisson? Yeah. So he uh, advocated for a low carb, high fat diet. I was like, alright, this is interesting. I've been told like grains are great, you know, this and that. And the school was amazing. Because they said, we're not here to teach you what to think, we're, teach we're here to teach you how to think. So they threw veganism at you, paleo, whole grains, high carb, low carb, all these things, and it really helped me. So then I became introduced to Dr. Perlmutter again low fat, or low, low carb, high fat, and then some talk about ketogenic diet. So I got really interested in it, and I became really passionate about it, and it was in 2015 I had to have an ACL reconstructive surgery, where before I was lucky enough to do prehab, and I got really, really dialed into my diet, and I didn't know at the time, but I was in a ketogenic lifestyle, in a ketogenic state, and I came out of surgery with half the swelling normal people, or normal situations come out with, with my knees, so it was, it was amazing. But then it wasn't until that diagnosis for the third time in 2017 where I took to the ketogenic lifestyle and implemented the diet 100%, the fasting, everything. And a year later, the MRI showed no progression. This winter, December, uh, January, would be a two-year follow-up, so I'm very confident that it'll, uh, it'll be the same, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But today, you know, I live with four brain tumors. I ride at the same level as you saw in the video. That was just filmed a couple uh, months ago. 
I, I coach others and help them implement this lifestyle and I'm having great success and it's very really fulfilling because this whole journey has taught me my purpose in life and it was more than just BMX, it's now grown to want to have an impact on others. And you know, the sharing is a passion line. But three things I want to leave you guys with is the, the three most important lessons this whole journey has taught me about, and then even hearing you know the stories today and the information is number one, perspective and gratitude is essential to life. You know, you can take something negative or positive, and if your perspective is off, you're gonna get different emotional responses to it. So for me, it was really taking that fear and then being grateful to have an opportunity to save my life and an opportunity to change my mind. And ultimately that's gonna affect my outcome dramatically. So perspective and gratitude are essential. Number two, health is internal. You look at me today, you would never think that there's something wrong with me, you know? And that's my, that my, my goal with sharing is to let people know health isn't just what's on the scale or on a piece of paper or what you, you look like, it's internal. It took hitting my head to get the scan that I deserved and paid for to really look at that. And then number three, our reality is the manifestation of our choices. Like my tattoo says, fear is just a thought, thoughts can be changed. You know, we have a choice every day, whether it's positive or times of hardship, we can think, you know, about what we want, what we want our life to look like, the vision for our life, our dreams, our aspirations, and we can really choose to become the survivor in a moment where, in my case, you know, my life is going to be taken away from me, or we can become, um, or a victim, I should say, or we become a survivor. And we can rewrite our story. We can write what we want to happen, and we can choose how to live our life. And so, that's, uh, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. So, I appreciate all of you and your time, and thank you so much.